Hi everybody, Two Neurons here, and welcome to the first video in this series on creating a menu that allows the user or the player of your game to change their video quality settings and screen sizes and resolutions. In this series, we'll create this exact menu that you see currently on screen. And if you notice the change resolution and the overall texture and quality, as well as got rid of the shadows. You do not need any special project set up for this. We will be going through this start to finish, looking at how to build this system using two widgets and your player controller. All you need for your player controller is the ability to open and close the menu. That said, I am starting in the base third person project. It does look a bit different, don't worry about that. It won't affect anything we do in this series. That said, I want to thank my Patreon sponsors for making this series possible. So a big shout out to Random Number Generator. And all of that said, fire up your editor and let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back to the editor. In this series of videos, we're gonna create a settings for engine scalability menu so the player can change how detailed shadows are, what the resolution's at, if they're full screened or windowed. And the first part of this that we're gonna take care of today is we are going to set up a part of the menu that we can reuse over and over again. So if we take a look at the engine scalability in our own editor under settings, engine scalability, we have them all listed here. Outside of view distance, they're all low, medium, high, epic, cinematic. We can't ignore that last one. So instead of having to redo, say, a series of buttons that say low, medium, high, epic over and over again, I'm going to create a widget that covers just that portion. And then we will reuse that widget over and over again. So just to give a, another quick introduction what's going on, why this looks a bit weird. This is the normal third person template starter. All I did was make that wall shorter and extend the walkway out for the uh, simple targeting system video I did. But everything else is the same. It's the same player, so it's the same third person character. In fact, it's not even the one from that video. If I hit my targeting key, as you see, the camera doesn't reset like it should. So. You don't need anything special. Only thing you really need, and I'm gonna create one now, is a player controller. And we're not even gonna do anything with that right now. We're just gonna do BP player controller, and we'll save all. I'm gonna go to where I know the um, game mode is, which is in the original third person BP. I'm gonna pop that open, and I'm just gonna change over my player controller class to my BP player controller. Now I realize that the organization I'm currently using isn't the best, and that's just because this isn't a full project. This is just a project they use to show, to showcase how to do certain things. All right, all that said, I'm gonna create a folder called widgets and we're gonna get started. I'm gonna create a new user interface. This will be for the part that repeats over and over again. This is going to be WBP, so widget blueprint, setting selector. All right, I'm just gonna pop that open, pin that into the window. First thing, I'm gonna go to my fill screen size. It's gonna become desired. I'm gonna take a size box, which you can never remember it's under, if it's panels or primitive. It is panels, put that into there. And I am going to do a width and height override. For width, I want them to these to be at least 220 units long, or 25 units. And for height, 100 units. There we go. All right, next, I'm going to get a button. Actually, I lied. I'm not going to get a button. I'm going to get a horizontal box first and place that in there. And this is just my anchoring point. So main anchor. In here, I am going to have a button. So I'm going to grab a button, place that there. Grab some text, place that there. All right, so my button, I am gonna set this to fill. I want this to be filled at one point, sorry, point one to five, so 12.5%. And I'm gonna change this to my down button. 
my text, I'm just going to put a caret or a bracket, pointed bracket, pointing to the left or the lesson sign, if you prefer that term. And this will be my down button text. And for the text, so it doesn't run off the screen, I am going to change the font to 20. So there's my font, current size is 24, change that to 20. We'll do some other edits along the way, don't worry about the shape of it just yet. I'm gonna grab myself a spacer, drop that spacer into the horizontal box, and I am going to change the padding so that on the right, we have a padding of five. Next, I'm going to grab another text widget and get rid of the text block. Oh, there it is, never mind. And put that into the main anchor. All right, so this one is going to be my settings text, and I'm just gonna use uh, curly brackets, medium, closing curly bracket. That's just, so I know that that's gonna be changed text, those brackets. All right, I am gonna set this to fill as well, and it's gonna fill 75%, so 0.75. I'm gonna grab another spacer, and I'm gonna drop that in right after. And this spacer, again, we're gonna use a padding on the left-hand side, though, now this time, of five. And finally, I'm just gonna grab this button, and I'm gonna duplicate it on the other side. And all the fill is correct there. It's actually gonna be up button. We're gonna change this to the greater than sign or the closing bracket or the closing caret sign, and this will be up button text. Let me just undo that name. Hey, look at how it changed text to uh, TXT. Cool. Up button text. All right. So that's what we're making today. Now, you can tell the size is clearly off. Let me grab the correct font, or correct text. Change that to 16, we'll center align it. Actually, let's put it towards the bottom there, there we go. Now, my question is, size to content, there we go. And size it to content. All right, so now that we size the content, we have this appearing slightly nicer. Let's go back to our button. Let's go to the down button first and find the padding. And on the top, we're gonna set this to 50. And on the top of the other button, we'll set this to 50. At, oop, that was the wrong part. We'll set that to 50 as well. All right, there we go, we have our button. The spacing at the top here, let me actually see if we can adjust that slightly. So if we change the height override to 50, and I get rid of that, there we go. Let's get rid of that padding and just change the height override. A little bit cleaner looking. So we have a button. It says our what our size will be. And then we have another button. So if we hit this, this will change to a lower value. We hit this, it will change to a higher value. So this will display what the setting is. And this, these will be how we change it. Let's go over to our graph now. And in our graph, we're going to just delete all of this to begin with. If we need anything from there, well, you can recreate them easily. So we're going to create a new custom event and this will be change value. So this custom event is going to handle when we increase or decrease the settings. So we have two buttons that will decrease or increase those. So this will be called by either of those. And we're gonna need an integer for this to work because the settings will be integer based and we'll do change by, and we're always gonna change it by one, but just easier to have this in here integer and we are going to pull from here we'll just promote a variable and this will be our setting value on one connect change by from the setting value just leave that there for a moment pull off this change by do a plus sign an int plus int and put it on the bottom part it is imperative that it is on the bottom or this will not work correctly the additive properties uh, can be slightly problematic for some reason in this case all right, so we have a, we take our starting value and we add that in. So change by 
is added into starting value. We are going to then come off the return value here and clamp it. And we're clamping it because it can only go so high and only go so low. And our min will be zero. Remember, we have four settings. So low, medium, high, and epic. So if our minimum is zero, then our max must be three. So zero, one, two, three. That's four values right there. And we're gonna take that return value and plug it into our settings value. All right, we'll then change the text. Ooh, that reminds me. Let's go back to our designer for a moment. Grab this text and select is variable. All right, in here, we're going to do a new custom event and this will be set value text. So we have our settings text here. We're gonna get it. We're gonna pull off of it and we are going to do set text and then look for the one that says text. So set text text. Just drag that under there, pull off of here, promote this little pink text uh, variable to a value text or to a variable and name it value text. There we go. And we're just gonna leave that there for a moment. We have one intermediary step we need to do. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our settings value. There we go. And we're gonna pull off of this and we're gonna do switch on int. So based on the value here, we're gonna switch something up. And we're gonna switch is what the value text is set as. And what we need here is five pins. So the first four should be obvious, low, medium, high, um, epic. I don't know why I blinked on that for a moment. And then we need one, a special one, for our overall settings button. Remember, we have, if we go back here, go to our settings and look at this real quick, we have all of these values that have the same thing except for view distance, which is far or near, medium, far. Uh, they all have this low, medium, high, epic. And then we have this one at the top, this overall quality one. You change, if you click here, it sets some alt epic. You change that, it is now a custom setting. So this is why we need that custom setting. So let's just set that back to epic for now. So that's what this extra one will be for. So we're gonna take a, a value text. We're gonna get, oh, sorry, not get. We're gonna set value text. Plug that into there and just duplicate it down here. Plug that into there. Plug that into there, keep going. And plug that into there. So we'll do low, medium, high, epic, and custom. All right, just quickly, I know this is not looking organized. Plug the switch into the set value text. Plug the low into the text setting there. Select the uh, switch on int and all the values. Collapse that down to a function and this will be select text. All right, now we haven't finished our select text. We just, we're doing it in here and collapsing down. Now let's finish it out, go back in here. And we have one final step to take care of. And this is really easy. Pull off of, actually I'm gonna line these up based on their backs that way. Do they line up a bit better? Pull off of here, do your return node. And then just put a reroute in if you want. I like having one and plug in all the others into that same return. There we go. All right. So back in our event graph, what we're going to do now is we're going to call the set text value. So we'll do set value text. All right. So when we change a value, we either increase it or decrease it by what we put into here. We clamp that between zero and three, so that's four options. We set our value. We then uh, pick our text value based on that. And then we display the text here. Okay. So let's take care of the two buttons. Let's do our down button since it's the first there. So on clicked, hey, there's our event. Let's just move this up here a bit. We are going to change value. If I can, you know, just hit enter there. So we call back up this event. We're gonna change it by a value of 
negative one. This is why it has to be on the bottom here. And then we're gonna have another event off of here in the next video that will update the values on certain elements. And we're gonna have the same with our up button. So we'll do on click, just duplicate that over, change value, and we're gonna change the value by just one this time. All right, so we're gonna have two more variables that we'll need to include, but we can't do that until the next video. So I realize this was a very short video and probably gonna be heavily edited due to me stammering a lot. My apologies if it isn't fully edited, but we, we just need to set this up so we can get our menu to work. In the next video, we will actually take care of setting up our menu that will actually see the entire thing of. All right, that said, a huge shout out to my Patreon sponsors, and thank you for being here. I hope to see you in the next video, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.